Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. We appreciate you joining us once again today. Today we're going to be talking about the Sig Sauer M11A1. This is one of those guns that whenever I get it out of the safe and I'm going to take it to the range, I'm always pretty happy about that because it does a lot of things well. It's a pistol that's been around for a long time. It does a lot of things really well. And it's a really good choice for self-defense. I'm going to tell you all about that in just a minute. And once again, welcome back. We appreciate you joining us. I want to take a moment to thank everyone who's uh, watching the videos and subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out a lot. And if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to locate the bot bottom right hand corner of your screen there. If you're on a computer, there's a little subscribe button you can hit there. If you're on a mobile device, you can just scroll down below the video and hit subscribe there and hit the bell icon and you'll get notified when we make a new video. It helps us out a lot and we do thank you for it. So what do we have here today? M11A1. You know, I just, I really just like this pistol and there's a lot of reasons why I like it. And uh, I'll try to cover those in as much detail as possible here as we talk about this. But a um, little bit of history. I'm not going to just uh, bombard you with the history of this gun because it, there is a lot to it um, as far as the development. Um, the, the original, this basically is a civilian version of a pistol that was developed for military use to uh, address some needs that they had. Um, and... In the summer of 2012, they announced they're releasing this M11A1, which is essentially um, a milled slide P229 chambered in 9mm with 228 labeled grips, an SRT trigger, the short reset trigger, Sig Light tritium night sights, 15-round um, magazines, and a military-style smart tag and serial number. Uh, my smart tag has been long gone just from cleaning and lots of use. But uh, if you buy one, it should have one on it brand new. So anywho, one thing I always like to do in the beginning is give you a little size comparison. And of course, um, it's not about the pistols even being alike in any way. It's more just to give you an idea of what they're like to carry. And I like to compare it with something that's pretty common. So I've got this Glock 19 here. Now, as far as overall outline, as far as the size of the gun, um, these are pretty close. And there's some obviously little differences here and there. Where you can really see the difference between them is the thickness. Um, the SIG, as you can see here, you can see it from here and you can see it from the back. It's a lot thicker right there in, in the middle. And, uh, and of course, the grip is a little bit longer. Not by a lot. So overall size is pretty close and the weight they feel about the same to me when they're in the holster and that's what I look for when I do a comparison like this is I try to show you a pistol that is very similar as far as size weight so it's something you can compare as far as how it's going to feel when it when you're carrying it on your hip so that's basic idea there so that's going to be your little basic history and overall size comparison on that guy. So let's talk about specifications. So the M11A1 is a, uh, if you've had any SIG products before, um, you know that they're not the cheapest guns in the world. Um, I feel like that SIG pistols are made uh, pretty well. The materials, the, the finish, the details that go into these guns are pretty good, and this one's no exception. Um, this has got a uh, aluminum alloy uh, frame that's anodized, and then you've got your stainless steel slide with nitron coating, which is very durable. And what you have to understand, it's hard to appreciate with just me telling you, but I have shot a lot of rounds through this pistol. I mean, a lot. This is a regular go to the range gun it usually ends up in the bag with me and for having as many rounds through it as it does it really shows very little signs of wear um, you have uh, phosphate coated parts as well for corrosion resistance 
Um, of course, we mentioned the Siglite sites, these nitron sites. Um, these are very good sites. You know, they they basically are white dot, obviously, during the daytime and at nighttime. They've got that green glow. Very good sight picture. Um, I've used this gun many times, both in low light and daytime shooting conditions. Very good. Um, of course, this is a double action, single action pistol. Um, it does come with three of these 15 round um, steel magazines, which is good. It has a decocker on it, which I rather like. Um, I've talked about, you know, pistols. If you've watched any of our videos and heard me talk about double action, single action pistols, you'll know that that is one of my uh, favorite configurations for a pistol just because I'm not a big fan of, of external safeties. But when you have a trigger pull, that's like this, you know, 10 or 11 pounds on double action and, you know, somewhere around four or four and a half pounds for single action. That double action trigger pull, it takes a lot to get through an 11 pound trigger pull. So that's um, a bit of a safety all in itself. I just, in my mind, I can't see me accidentally pulling through an 11 pound trigger pull. Then, of course, there's that four and a half pound single action trigger pull. Now this is the SRT trigger. So basically when you, I'll show you this here, whenever you fire this, okay, and then you recycle the slide and watch this, very short. And then you can fire again, once again, there's that short reset. And then one more time for you there. Yeah, it's just really great. The decocker is great, so, you know, you can make the gun safe at any time. If it's cocked, just by dropping that decocking lever and, um, you know, getting it back in safe condition. Um, this is your takedown lever. We'll go over that in just a minute whenever we um, take it apart. Um, the SIGs, I believe, uh, are very easy to disassemble uh, to do the basic maintenance. Um, you do have a little bit of texturing here in the metal on the front of the grip. It's not real heavy, but it, it actually does some good. You can feel it. Now, you've got this, what I call the standard SIG plastic grip. You know, it's got some, you know, fairly rough texturing all over. And I'm not... I'm not the biggest fan in the world of this kind of grip, but it's never bothered me on the SIGs. And I guess just because the contour and the feel is really good, um, it's a grip that I don't have any issue with at all. Um, and I've got some other SIG pistols that I have changed these plastic grips out with, uh, you know, like G10 grips, something a little more aggressive that had a different feel. But so far on the M11A1, the stock grip works pretty well for me. So I've made no plans to change it. You never know. I might someday, but it's not bad. And looking it over, you can see the, the fit and finish, the detail on the pistol is very nice. And like I say, that's one of the things I really like about them. There's your magazine release right there. Um, it's almost even with the grip, as you can see that there, but it's almost even with the top of the grip there. So you do have to get your thumb in front of it there to make that thing release. It's not an issue for me, but it's just something to be aware of. But that's kind of your overall view of the uh, basic features there on the M11A1. All right, so obviously we're gonna talk about your um, disassembly procedure. Um, SIG pistols, as a general rule, uh, to me, are they've made this really easy. On a pistol like this, obviously we're going to make sure the pistol is safe, clear. That should be basic safety handling 101 for any pistol. But once you have the slide locked back like this, you take your takedown lever here, and just rotate it downward in that position. And then you can 
release that slide lock and just take it right on off the gun just like that. You go inside here, of course you've got your rod and your spring. You're going to need to get your finger down in here that's not very much of it exposed. You have to take your finger and kind of press and make sure you hang on to it because the the works is under some pressure there. So you pull that out and of course then you have your barrel that comes right out. And then you've got your basic disassembly just like that. There's really not a whole lot to it. And once again, you know, they've got phosphate coated parts and in, uh, in this gun, so they wear really, really well. Um, one of the things I always do when I have these um, apart is I always go to the areas on the frame here where the slide's going to move on it. I always do a little bit of oil right there. I always put a little bit of oil in the mechanism here at the top. I don't like to do a lot because I don't like my guns really, really oily, but I put a little bit in there. And then, of course, when you go to reassemble the weapon, everything is going to be the reverse of what we just did. Um, you got your barrel. Put that back in place. You've got your uh, spring and your rod. Just find the hole there and get it started and just hold it straight. And when you push it in, make sure you drop it down into that first little notch there and you'll know when it's there it should look just like that then you can realign the grooves and bring it back all the way and bring it all the way back and lock it again with the slide stop and then all you have to do is take your takedown lever and rotate it back up in place and then the gun's reassembled. Of course, we're going to do a function check to make sure everything's the way it should be. And you have disassembled and reassembled your M11A1. And that's all there is to it. Pretty straightforward. So let's talk about the range. Well, once again, this is a pistol that has had a lot of rounds through it. Um, I have absolutely no shame in saying that I have shot this pistol probably um, as much as any pistol that I own. Um, it may be the most rounds. I think the only pistol that I've shot more than this one might be my uh, P239. Uh, maybe. But they're, they're running neck and neck. So how did it perform? Well, I put every kind of ammo I had on hand. Um, I had some Winchester and some Remington um, and some Federal Range ammo. Um, it had no issue shooting the range ammo, um, no failures. And, and this is when it was new as well. Obviously, um, I did a recent shoot just to kind of rehash everything. And it took everything I gave it. But when this gun was brand new out of the box, um, I didn't even clean it. I just started feeding it ammo and it was extremely reliable. And the, the groupings were really good. Now I generally train at 21 feet, um, with my defensive guns. That's just kind of a standard range that I, I practice at uh, as far as, you know, accuracy, um, getting, you know, shots on target, getting follow-up shots on target as quickly as I can, but I do shoot longer distances. So just for grins, um, this pistol at 75 feet, um, I was getting groups that were anywhere from two to three inches, depending on how well I was shooting. And that's with all kinds of ammo. That's with junk ammo. That's with uh, defensive ammo. And when I was at 21 feet, I could get groups under an inch really, really easy. And that's without trying all that hard. Uh, it's just a really good, really good shooting pistol. That trigger, that SRT trigger, you, you have to get used to the fact that it resets so quickly uh, because if you're used to shooting triggers that aren't the same way, obviously you have to kind of get the feel of every you know gun that you're shooting. They're all going to have a little bit different characteristics when you pull the trigger. Once you get used to how that SRT trigger works, 
your shots will come really, really fast and you can keep the, the gun, get the gun back on target very quickly. Um, the sights, once again, these little sig light sights, the white dot, you know, during the daytime shows up really well. Um, so it's a pretty good sight picture, you know, um, the grip, you know, I talked about that this is that standard plastic grip. Um, this is a pistol I can shoot a lot. And, you know, I talk about sometimes wanting more aggressive texture, but this texture doesn't bother my hand. I can shoot this gun all day long at the range and I don't end up with, you know, uh, my hand hurting because with some really aggressive textures, you know, that can happen. You can start to really feel it in your hand. Um, nothing like that. I can't tell you exactly how many rounds I've put through this pistol, but the main thing I want you to kind of observe is the lack of damage to the finish. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not exceptionally super touchy and careful when I disassemble the weapon. As you can see, I didn't scratch it during that process. I haven't really scratched it at the range. Well, a little bit of dirt left over there from the range. Didn't get that as clean as I should. But uh, there's no damage. There's no damage whatsoever to the pistol. And I think that's just a testament to how well the pistol's made and how well the parts are coated and protected. Um, so as far as performance, um, it's a lot of fun to shoot. You know, if you didn't buy this pistol for any other reason, just have something to shoot 9mm and enjoy it, you would do just that. You could shoot this pistol all day long and have a good time. But it really instills confidence because the pistol is so accurate and it's so reliable with zero failures. Um, that gives me the confidence to want to carry a weapon like this if it's something that I have to protect myself with. So I don't have any negatives whatsoever as far as range performance on this pistol. So what's it like to carry an M11A1 as a carry gun? Well, you know, earlier I made a little comparison between the, the Glock 19 just as far as size. You know, I wanted, to, wanted you to see what kind of basic size of the gun is. Um, to me, if you're used to carrying a Glock 19 or a similar size pistol, you won't have an issue carrying the M11A1. It's just a little bit thicker, but if you have it in a good holster, you don't really notice that. Um, I carry inside the waistband almost exclusively. There are a few exceptions. I have some pistols that are large enough that um, the only way I can really carry them comfortably is outside the waistband. But in general rule, I carry inside the waistband. And um, this is one that I've been pretty happy with uh, Crossbreed, the Super Tuck. And I've carried the M11A1 and a Crossbreed for a long, long time. Um, the Kydex is a good fit. It's very good retention. You know, I can take this holster and the weapon stays in. And the clips are good and strong. And yes, I do have my holsters labeled because I have so many of them. That's the only possible way I can know which one is for which gun. Not a bad idea for you if you have a lot of them. But the weapon fits really well in this holster. The this type of holster feels really good against the body and um, it's a very solid type of holster and I feel very confident carrying this type of holster um, for this gun and with a good belt combination of a good holster and a good belt uh, it feels very solid and it feels very safe now there are other good holster options out there um, I've seen some uh, Galco leather that I rather like too, that um, I've actually got my eye on one I'm, I want to try for this. And I have actually carried this in a sticky. I've mentioned the sticky holsters before because I use them for lots of things. I don't really recommend that kind of holster for a gun like this just because it's heavier. And like if I'm carrying a Glock 19, I usually don't carry a sticky either. I've done it before. But the heavier the gun gets, the more I want to get to a holster that is attached to the belt, you know, and has some kind of solid retention as opposed to a lighter pistol that I feel like will stay put in, you know, a little pouch type holster like that sticky. If you haven't used them before, you know, this is your typical sticky holster. You know, the weapon goes inside and then 
you get this between the inside of your uh, jeans or whatever um, and the friction you know it, it has this kind of tacky surface and it holds it in place it does work but I tend to go with something that has more retention for a heavier pistol so the answer is um, can you carry this weapon as a carry gun comfortably yeah absolutely um, I've done it a lot now this is definitely a gun that I'm only going to carry when I can um, you know wear and uh, you know a shirt that's untucked um, I'll have an inner t-shirt and then an untucked outer shirt to where I can you know make sure to have this gun on me and not print um, I always want to make sure I'm, I'm very discreet that's part of being a responsible gun owner obviously if I'm going to carry concealed to do it discreetly and um, this is a gun that is big enough to me that that's what I'm going to need to do is make sure it's in a good quality holster and I have the right kind of clothing but very comfortable for everyday carry um, very good pistol so overall impressions well the M11A1 is a pistol that does a lot of things right um, it's built really well it has the kind of features that at least I look for in a pistol um, and that starts with the build quality um, it's an extremely good uh, you know good quality gun it's well built the finish is good the, the details are just incredible it's got good sights um, I like the fact that it's a double action, single action with the decocker. It's got decent grips. Um, you know, I didn't mention this earlier, um, but it does have a, you know, large trigger guard. And I tend to mention that because, uh, for me, I don't have the, the biggest hands in the world, but I have, I guess, medium to large size hands. And I like having a trigger guard that can actually accommodate my finger properly when it's indexed on the side of the gun like that. So... The ergonomics of the gun are very good. I like the sights. I like the shooting performance. And um, it's a gun that's been around for a long time. And, you know, SIG has, um, I think, got this down to a science. Of course, I don't know what the future holds like anybody on these guns. Because SIG, you know, they models come and models go. And since the, um, the new SIG pistol is going to be taking over a lot of the military applications... You know, I'm hoping that that doesn't mean that this will go away. Um, for now, you can still get M11A1s. And uh, they also make, um, if you happen to live in a state where you have to have a 10 round um, to be compliant, they make a 10 round version of this as well. Um, and that was still current um, last time I looked on SIG's site, which was very recently. So there's a 10 round, round version of this as well. But overall, it's a great pistol. It's a great shooter. Um, it's super accurate, super reliable, and it really instills confidence because if you're going to carry a gun and you want everything, this is one of the guns that gives you everything. It gives you capacity, it gives you reliable uh, performance and accuracy, and it has uh, features that help you be a better shooter. So overall, just really great. So that's going to do it, guys. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to join us again today. Once again, if you haven't subscribed, take a minute to do so. And um, we'll be back very soon with another video. So until then, be safe. And we'll be back soon. Thanks a lot.